All right, Paul, so welcome, welcome to the lovely, lovely town of Camden. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm going to start with just asking you how the Mayhem Tour has been going so far for you. We're going really good. You know, just, uh, I mean, just been, I don't know, it's been good. That's all I can say so far. I mean, it's been, it, you know, it's been fun. It's been nice to be out here. It's good to be out supporting the new record. Cool. And uh, yeah, Repentance comes out September 11th, yeah. 9-11. Yeah. Um, I got a link uh, to six songs, and uh, it's fucking phenomenal. It's oh, phenomenal, you. dude. Um, and, and you were in on the whole process, the, the whole writing and recording process? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Carrie and I worked on the album. Carrie had some material, there were some pre-existing songs that, that were, that Carrie had before um, I, I, I joined the, rejoined the band. Um, and some of those he actually worked on with Dave, and then um, then the majority of the record is, is all me, all me and Carrie. Um, Cast the first stone yep. is is very drum heavy in the beginning, and uh, I, I guess there are four toms that you use, and it, it sounds like it's got a real thick uh, sound to it. Um, uh, when you were laying drums for that song in particular, what was that like in the studio and laying that down? It, it just it just it's not a typical Slayer, you know, it's not a typical Paul, yeah. um, but it just has a real bombastic beginning to it, you know, I, I really dig it. Nice. Uh, it, 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 that was a fun song to play in the studio. I love the beginning of the song because it kind of, you know, every time you go, every time I do, and I know other people do, you know, usually when you hear a song or an idea, you kind of like instantly um, triggers an influence. Like as soon as I heard the beginning of that song, it triggered Bill Ward. Okay. Uh, all of a sudden I thought, oh, Bill Ward. You know, and it just kind of, I, I, I thought, man, this is like real, it's real Sabbathy to me. So it's just kind of like when, when I hear a certain riff or certain something, it makes me think a certain way, and all I could think of was Black Sabbath at that moment. That's cool. How was the, the recording process for Repentance? I, I'm assuming a lot of it was built around Carrie's, Carrie's riffs, and then it, you guys kind of just took it from there? Um, the whole, well, the whole album, except for one song, was built around Carrie's riffs okay. um, and Carrie's ideas. Um, Carrie uh, comes in when he comes in with a song. He has a very strong idea of what the structure is going to be for each part for the entire song. song. Yeah, okay. yeah. So because like you know when you write a song, you know as a visionary of the song, you have an idea, you know of what you know what you want the song to do when you're writing the riff, or even as a drummer, if I'm writing guitar riffs, you know I'll know what the drum beat's going to be, or I'll start with a drum beat and go the other way. So you know, I understand what it's like for songwriters to write songs. Um, so Kerry had a really had a really strong vision of the whole album. I mean, he he worked his, he worked his ass off on this record. You know, I think a lot of people need to know that. How long was the whole process? Then? Well, I mean, you know, some guys get in and out in months, but it, it sounds like it's no. Well, no, we we weren't recording and we weren't recording and writing the album for two years. Um, we were we we went in the studio and um, I think drum tracks were done like in a week and a half. Um, you know, uh, for the majority of the record, well, then we went on tour and came back, and there were some other songs they wanted to do. So we went ahead and and you know did a few more songs as well. I mean, we probably I think we did over 15 songs for this record, wow. maybe more. Um, while we were in the the, the recording process for this record, is probably different than any I've ever had before because we had you know I had my recording kit with all the microphones on it, and then I had another drum set set up that was a rehearsal kit. And Carrie had a practice amp in the main room because oh, wow. some of these ideas were, were ideas I hadn't played before. So we'd come in and you know Carrie would show me the song and we'd jam it out and then I'd learn the arrangement. You know, take it to the, the the recording kit, record it, take it home, come back the next day. We'd rehearse a little more and then record it. And usually there was some on this record. Sometimes on this record, I think we probably only rehearsed maybe ten times. Not the whole record. The and, majority and of the record. The final was, take was was after just rehearsing. A handful of times. Yeah, on some of the songs. Yeah, but but that's that's not the majority of the record. We Carrie and I had we had it hammered out pretty well. Okay. You know, it's it's just so great. You know, 2015 the band's back. You know, and um, when National Records were day, I went out. Luckily, I got one of the 3,000 copies of the single that came out. Um, uh, when the stillness comes. And that song in my head is a classic. I mean, it, it's a classic already. Um, you know, when you guys laid that first down, did you know that it was something special? Um, well, I never, I hadn't even heard the, the vocals yet. On all these songs, I really, there's only a few songs that I had heard what the vocals sounded like on the whole album. Okay. So, I, but I can tell you that the music was really fun to play because, you know, the, the majority of the record's high energy and yeah. fast, but this song is like, um, it's darker. So it's very, it's probably the slowest Slayer song I've ever played. 
Well, and, and, and you know, it's, it's very few times um, where I get to actually lay back and then just play a simple pocket and like, you know, again, like, you know, I, I was kind of in my, you know, in my Vinnie Apathy mode for that song, you know, I, was, I went back to Black Sabbath again, it was just like, man, it's like, you know, this is a chance to play big stony drum fills, you know, and, and you don't always get that, you know, that's, those are things that drummers sometimes really want, you know. So, and, and live, we, we play it live, and live is super fun to play because, you know, I get to hear the, the enormity of it all, yeah. and I get to play play with that. So it's like, it just, it, 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 that, that's a very fun song to play. Yeah, it's just phenomenal because, you know, it builds as a Slayer song. I love the know, last riff in that, that bum, song. Bum, 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 that's little riff that just yeah. kind of, all right, here it comes, and then once everyone kicks in and Tom kicks in, it's just like, oh, it's Slayer's here, you know? Um, and and I get that from a lot of the songs, you know, Piano Wire, another one that I just, I really dig that song. Yeah, Piano Wire, uh, I, if you know the history of it, was uh, was uh, from the World Painted Blood Sessions. It was a song that Jeff had written Interesting. for wow. that, for that. That's, that's a Jeff Hanneman song. Wow. And Jeff had written that one for uh, the World Painted Blood Session, but it didn't make it to the record. And while we were in the process of doing this, the guys had found, um, Tom had found, um, some songs and some ideas that Jeff had had uh, put had you know some had something that he hadn't finished others that and then he found this one that was completed um, and they forgot about it and um, you know uh, when I heard it I was like holy crap this is awesome yeah you know it's it's the lyrics are amazing it's Jeff wow. Hanneman you know so so that but the funny thing about that track is for me is they had already recorded it with Dave okay. so um, what they did is they took the drum tracks out of it. And I re-recorded the drums in my way to the to the song, which is different than Dave's. Mm -hmm. The song's still the same, um, just we have different approaches. So my approach was different, but it's with my approach. And um, you know, Jeff, I think Jeff and Carrie are both. I think it's just Jeff on rhythm guitar, or Jeff and Carrie on rhythm guitar. But Jeff is playing on that song. Oh wow! Um, and uh, and you know, there was vocals already on it, but Tom re-recorded the vocals for this session. Yeah. So the song itself. Uh, the guitars all stayed the same, but Tom and myself, you know, we we revamped the parts. So, um, so yeah, Piano Wire, I love that song. Um, when you were last in the band, God Hates Us All was the album. Um, how do you think that the band's um, grown or, you know, evolved from then until now? Well, on God Hates Us All, it seemed to me like we were rebuilding. Because I think there was an era when uh, I had joined, um, right after Seasons in the Abyss, um, we did, got, we did uh, Divine Intervention, and I think music changed. Like yeah. the bottom dropped out of MTV, like, you know, um, thrash metal and heavy metal, and that genre, like, like it was like deemed um, done and over. Mm -hmm. So I think at that point, you know, we, we were back where we were supposed to be, like, you know, underground, you know, but we were like, but people were, but people were still, we, oh, and there were Slayer fans everywhere. Sure, it's sure. just, you know, it's just to, to be, to be, I guess the best way to describe it, that MTV culture was gone. Right. right. I remember when we did every album we did after that. You know, we did tours and everything like that. You know, we were busy all over the world. People knew who we were, and I remember we played Ozfest in 2000, and I remember we were doing a, a signing at a booth, and one of the fans had said, "You know, I, I didn't even know you guys were still a band anymore." I'm like, "Oh yeah, we've been we've been touring and everything for 10 years," and it just told me, I, I you know, and I, I was, and it, that told me right there, like it, you know, this is re, this is kind of what's what's happening, you know, and, you know, and I kind of knew it, but it's you know, but when you when you get it from like you know, somebody else's perspective, like, "Oh, I love your band. I didn't even know you guys were around anymore." Yeah. Then when we did wow. when we did when we yeah. did God hates us all, you know, um, it really, you know, it really kind of like. I mean, the the timing of everything really kind of, you know, the album coming out on September 11th, you know, what happened, you know, uh, to the Twin Towers, the whole thing was just like lightning in a bottle. And, um, you know, uh, I think people started paying attention. Uh, I can't say people started paying attention then, because the people that matter are Slayer fans. Just It just probably just made more people aware, that's all. You recaptured interest for some people? Yeah, maybe you know, maybe it's just you know, it, maybe it was just that record. Maybe it was just I think it was the build up over time. Right. You know, um, I, you know, I think the fan base was very loyal in the beginning, and when and losing an original member, you know, yeah. and me coming yeah. in, bring brand new, nobody knew, nobody knowing who I was. You know, it was a build up process for the fans to have faith in me too. Right. You know, and I totally understood that. Oh, that's cool. That's you know. Really cool. 
being back in the band with Gary, um, what's that like having him on stage with you every day, like back in the day? Oh, it's freaking awesome. I mean, you know, I, you know, when I was a kid, I'd go see Exodus shows. You know, so um, you know, I've always known that you know Exodus was killer, and I toured yeah. with Exodus when I was in Forbidden. Yep. You know, back in the day, and uh, you know, and I had the honor of playing on Shovel Shovelhead Kill Machine and touring behind that record um, with with Gary as well. So you know, I mean, I know Gary. You know, I know what kind of guitar player he is and what kind of person he is. It's, you know, it was like, you know, it wasn't like, you know, when I rejoined the band, uh, you know, there was Carrie and, and Tom, and unfortunately Jeff not being with us, right. and then some guy I didn't know. Right, right. It was like, you know, it was like we'd all played together. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we were more of a band from the get-go than, than ever. And that's what I'm getting at. It, it, it seems like that would be that dynamic that, you know, you guys are all, you know, almost the same band again with different... Piece, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's you know, um, you know, uh, Jeff was Jeff was Gary had Jeff's blessing to, to you know when he was filling in for him. You know, they were friends. You know, Gary's family. So and, yeah. that, and that's very it's a really important thing to this band. That's cool. Um, one more song I wanted to touch on for the new album was um, a "Take Control," um, which again is, is I think you know once everyone hears it, they're gonna you know really perk up on, on that song. I mean, talk a little bit about that song. Well, uh, the, as to why, as to the um, influence as to why the lyrics were written, I couldn't tell you because Carrie and I haven't talked about that yet. Okay. Um, but like I said, the lyrics were written, you know, after I recorded the drum tracks. And right. some of these songs, I never even knew what the lyrics were going to be like, you know. But I have faith in the final pro, in the, what happens at the final process because I know I've been doing this long enough. But um, I take controls another, another one of that awesome song in the record. I mean, it's uh, man, it's it's you know, I can't. Every song on this record has something different. It's not. It's a diverse record. It's a Slayer record. You know, um, Take Control is just another one of the good ones. Yeah, I agree. Anything to add to Mr. Paul? Other than that, except for the years and years other, of other than killer that, it's like such a killer <laughs> honor just to be you know in the same room and bullshit with you, man. It's you know, I, first time I saw Slayer, and you know they were back in up three, and I've already been gone, you know, but. Uh, I saw Slayer for the first time with five staples in my stomach because I had an appendectomy five days prior. Oh, and crap. <laughs> had tickets and went to the electric factory, but it's... You know, Sounds like a Slayer fan. Oh, man. So it's, this is a big I'm going to go see a Slayer <laughs> <laughs> Die hard all the way, man. People in the parking lot were, like, praising me for it, but, uh, you know, uh, it's just it's just cool to come full circle and meet you guys, you know, and it's, 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 very, it's like, the coolest honor. Oh. You know? One of, the greatest, one of the greatest bands of all time, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Um, is there any secrets to longevity, you know, on the road, you know? Is there any things that you would uh, suggest to younger bands, you know, but who are out there touring? Any uh, tidbits of advice? Yeah, well, anything you don't think is going to kill you today could kill you tomorrow. Right. So, I mean, you know, take care of yourself as best you can. You know, I mean, when I was young, I partied a lot, you know, I mean, and I mean, I drank a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, got off stage, had shots with the boys, woke up, had a hangover, got back on stage, did it all over again. I can't do that anymore, right. you know, but, uh, you know, I still have, you know, my glass of wine and stuff like that. But just, you know, try not to burn your candle out too fast. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. Well, well I appreciate you your time, man. All right. Have a killer show tonight. We'll be out there cheering for fucking Slayer. Killer. Yeah, Enjoy it, guys. Yeah, right on. I appreciate Thanks. that.